So what I'm looking for here now is my queen. My name is Jerry Cronin and uh, I'm retired now but I kept bees with the last 25 years. The name that I put on my honey is um, I live on the south side of Cunut uh, Nivyuk and it's uh, it's a viewing area over Bantry um, that you can look down Bantry Bay. Uh, it's um, Cunnock Navik, which is Raven Hill, which there are quite a few ravens here um, off the hill. And I'm on the sunny side of it, so I make nicer honey on the, on the south side. I suppose really what attracted me to the bees was their their signs. Uh, I was never interested in honey, but honey was kind of a byproduct, and it had to be dealt with. I just I think I seen a few swarms around the summer hanging off a, a fence, uh, and I just was intrigued by that number of bees, uh, you know. The book was, what was it? Teach Yourself. <laughs> that was the only thing. I think the nearest place that I could get to get a, a beekeeping course was in Cork City. I basically bought books. I, I bought books, I got books from the library. And then I joined the local association and uh, kind of thing, but there was no such a thing as doing uh, courses or classes at that time, they were too far. I got in touch with a man in Ballinaspital and uh, he was kind of, 25 years ago, there was no such thing as people clipping uh, wings or painting the backs of queens, uh, but he was into it. So my first stock of bees I got, the queen was marked and clipped. Why we clip the queen is uh, because they, uh, when they go to swarm in the summer, which is the only way they have learned to procreate, and so the the old queen will go out with the uh, swarm of bees, and that would be anything from fifteen to twenty or thirty thousand bees. So she will she will take with her nearly two thirds of your bees. So for months your bees swarm, uh, your honey collecting workforce is gone. And so, uh, they, they, so what happens if, if we overlook a cell, um, a queen cell when they're swarming, uh, the queen is clipped, uh, so the bees will go out, they'll hang out in a bush and they'll wait for mother queen to come with them. And because her wing is clipped, uh, she will go out of the hive, but she can't fly. They'll hang in the bush until dusk, and when she doesn't turn up, they go back to the hive. So where you've lost your, your, your queen, uh, you have your, your workforce. They'll collect um, nectar and pollen from the flowers, and nectar being their um, car carbohydrate, uh, pollen is their protein and uh, they'll collect uh, propolis and propolis has, uh, is collected from uh, tree buds and they use this as a DIY in the hive and it has antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral um, substance in it and they will use it as a DIY in the hive and they use it to polish the cells for the next lot of 
grubs going in or clean the cells for the, the, the honey when they collect the honey. Over winter, uh, with about 10 or 15,000 bees, and they will maintain the hive at about 21 degrees without brood. Uh, in a brood period, they will have to up that to 35 degrees. Their summer population is will expand to about 60 to 80,000 bees. Uh, the, the smoke is, uh, it subdues the bees and I think uh, what they tell us, I think it distracts them anyway. Uh, but the other thing is that um, they were, it's evolutionary kind of with them in that uh, when they were in the forest and there was a forest fire during the summer uh, and the, the their hive or their nest became smoke laden, uh, they filled their crops with, with honey and they took off. So it's, it's, so basically when you smoke them, that's what they do, they, they fill their crop. And of course, if you have a full stomach and the bee has to, to get its abdomen around like that to sting you, well, if you have a full stomach, you won't be too inclined to sting. <laughs> so they, they collect, yeah, they, they go for, and they, you'll see them kind of going into the cells and, and drinking honey because they think they have to leg it. Finding the queen is a bit challenging uh, in the spring, and uh, that's rewarding when when you have when you have found them all, uh, you know. And I think it's the biggest uh, for me as a beekeeper. It's the biggest challenge um, that, like, from once you have your queens clipped and marked, um, your 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 beekeeping season is nearly done, you know. Uh, but predominantly our our honey is, is um, uh, bramble, which is the blackberry flower, which is out now. And but other than that, you'll get a bit from everything else like clover and, and things. Uh, but our main 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 honey flows from the uh, blackberry. I'll forget to zip a hood one day. Uh, and I might go through nine or ten hives uh, and the next thing, uh, it'll be the last hive that I'll get a bee in that'll, that'll sting me. But uh, if, I'm, if I'm zipped up well, there is, there is no stinging. I'd probably have five, ten hives for maybe, you know, five, ten years and then it kind of expanded and then I retired um, six or seven years ago and I upped my number then and uh, so I, I run about 25 to 30 hives now. That keeps me occupied. <laughs> It's kind of warm underneath, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> and that's good enough if you're not getting stung. <laughs> Add a couple of stings to it. <laughs> <laughs> 